it is a great pleasure to welcome Dr. Paul Auerbach, who is fresh off the baseball field, and we congratulate him and his son and appreciate his um, ability to be in both places tonight. So welcome, Paul. Well, the kids in Aptos aren't too happy, but we're pretty happy in Los Altos. Um, it's a, it's a great pleasure for me to be here with you tonight. Um, I really appreciate the opportunity to be here. Speaking of actors, when I was working at San Francisco General, we estimated that at any given time we had at least two people in the hospital um, impersonating doctors, um, and we just weren't able to spot them all the time. Um, uh, the, is this being recorded? No. The, uh, um, we're, we've all been patients, um, and I think um, what I'm going to talk about tonight is not particularly cheerful. It's just very real. Um, so I like to think of myself as being compassionate but direct. And I'm going to talk tonight about the state of emergency medicine in this country. Um, and I think it's important for everybody here to understand that because uh, it's an area that's near and dear to our hearts and certainly will be to you as time goes on. But we come from the, from the patient perspective, and I think we always have to think about that. Um, I had my last, my most recent episode as a patient was I had the good fortune to be uh, trekking to base camp at Everest uh, a couple of years ago. And um, on the way up, as do many people, um, I was stricken uh, with infectious diarrhea from trying to uh, eat the local food. And was really pretty dehydrated uh, and let the people that was the people that were with me practice emergency medicine on me. They couldn't wait after all my lectures to stick an IV in my arm and give me some liquids. And I had, thank God for the medicine Zofran, which is an anti-nausea medicine. I was able to have a lucid moment and do about a 3,500 foot climb uh, that day to get up to a monastery that we wanted to visit and to meet with the Lama and have one of the few spiritual moments that I thought I could have on the trip. And when I was there, they said, Paul, do you want to go up? because I didn't feel too well. And I said, of course I do. And when I got there, they said, do you want to meet with the Lama? And I said, yeah. I mean, that's why I risked my life to climb up here. So after 11 hours hallucinating and climbing up the hill and getting there, I met with the Lama. And he came up and he heard the story about how I had climbed up. And he, he started to hug me. And he put prayer shawls around me. And, and everybody was getting choked up. Even I was getting choked up. And, and he pressed something into my palm. And I looked down at it, and it was, a, it was a golden Buddha. And now I was just losing it. I was, you know, tears were running down my eyes. Everybody was getting excited. And then he pulled me really close, and he hugged me, and he put something in my other hand, and it was a pack of Cipro tablets. And so <laughs> I think, you know, there's, there's, there's the reality to medicine, and, and you have to keep your sense of humor. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come to this from the perspective of having... Um, been at many institutions. Um, these are um, some of them. It's not uh, that I keep getting run out. It's just that I'm getting older. And, and um, I've run two major university emergency medicine programs. Um, I put a trauma system into the state of Tennessee. I, you can't be any luckier than, than having a friend like Bob. And, and this community is very, very fortunate um, to have him here. I'm trained as both a physician as a manager, and so I'm going to approach this topic um, from both a medical perspective and from a, a bit of a business perspective. Um, this is a quote that I'm going to read to you from the Coalition to Advance Healthcare Reform. Dear friend, it is no secret that California's healthcare system is badly broken. Millions are uninsured, healthcare costs for those who have insurance are skyrocketing, and the situation worsens with every day that passes. Time is running out. We need more, ban more than Band-Aids and a soothing bedside manner. Our state's healthcare system is in need of a visit to the emergency room. I think most of the people in California have already figured out that there are significant problems with our healthcare system. And when they don't feel good and they need someone to take care of them, they already go to the ER. Um, Emergency medicine is an absolutely indispensable component of America's healthcare system. There is no other venue um, in our system that's open 24 by 7 every day of the year. It's often stated that emergency departments are the safety net for our healthcare system. Well, I don't think they're the safety net. I think we actually practice under the big top. 
I think we are the healthcare system in many cases. By default, we've become the most important entry point into the healthcare system for people with acute problems, whether or not they have primary care doctors or any other pre-existing doctor relationships. In the 1950s, um, emergency medicine wasn't a specialty. Um, the ER of the 1960s, staffed by whomever would take call, has now been transformed into a specialty area with board certified emergency physicians. Um, I, actually, when I was a resident at UCLA, um, I got to uh, write the first pilot for the show St. Elsewhere. Um, so uh, we can, in fact, use the actors, I guess, from, from time to time. Today, emergency physicians are called upon to treat all manner of critical care patients, such as heart attacks, strokes, and trauma. We're expected to be the response leaders for emergency preparedness, such as in situations with mass, mass casualties, bioterrorism, natural disasters. We're expected to direct pre-hospital care for our communities, provide air medical transport and poison control, be experts in sports medicine, occupational medicine, travel medicine, public health, acute cancer crises, and everything else that you might imagine. So think about it. Every clinical service in the hospital relies upon the ER for support. It's the front door for the sickest patients and has become the face of many medical centers. The emergency department is held to a very high standard but it's influenced in meeting those standards by every consulting service and every other aspect of the hospital. So let's consider just a few areas in which the modern emergency department excels. Most emergency departments are now leaders within their medical centers providing rapid and efficient patient evaluations, facilitating advanced imaging techniques, particularly to support community physicians and community referrals, short stay units to provide chest pain evaluation for patients, intake for patients that suffer strokes or suspected strokes, intensive care medicine that has to be applied very rapidly to an increasingly aging population. And then we have to be able to adapt probably quicker than any other area in the hospital because we have a very diverse population. The excitement of emergency medicine is we really never know what's coming through the doors. And it ranges from toddlers with earaches to transplant recipients who are having organ rejection. And then, of course, as has been highlighted by recent events such as 9-11 and the, the threat of pandemics, we have to be able to respond to any mass casualty incident. But emergency departments across this country are generally in big trouble. Here are the national facts. Healthcare expenses have grown from 7.2% of GDP in 1970 to 16.2% of GDP in 2005 and are estimated to reach 22.5% of GDP in the year 2015. Most of the costs associated with the healthcare system are related to cardiovascular disease, diabetes, cancer, and obesity. Our population is increasingly needy and the system is overwhelmed. Here are some more facts. There are more than 115 million visits each year in the, in the United States to emergency departments. Visits are up more than 26% in the past 10 years, but the number of emergency departments nationwide is down 14%. Why did that happen? Well, it happened because if you remember, there was the big push that we, were, we had too many hospital beds. There was too much capacity. So people went around and they closed hospitals, and when they closed hospitals, they closed emergency departments. So between 1993 and the year 2003, hospitals closed nearly 200,000 beds and 425 emergency departments. Um, an interesting fact is that 90% of visits are for the initial evaluation of a medical problem. Well, what does that mean? It means that these are complex patients um, and that the people that come to emergency department are not coming in with a, a known diagnosis. It takes time, um, it takes a fair amount of testing, it takes a fair amount of expertise to make these diagnoses. 50% of the patients that come to emergency departments actually need care that is, that is important care within the first hour of their presentation. Now, I define important care as someone with a bad headache that needs pain relief, um, someone who um, needs something for their heart, for their lungs, etc. But that means that these are generally 
pretty sick patients. 